at Medical Sciences by Naftali Mhumza. You are so much welcome. And in today's session, we want to discuss about drug metabolism, or what we call biotransformation. In the previous video, we have looked at the drug absorption, we have looked at the distribution of the drug within the body. And now we want to see when the drug reaches in the liver, how is it metabolized? And as we begin, we remind you to subscribe. Or is, if you haven't subscribed, like the video and share to many others. And as we begin, drug metabolism, or what we call a xenobiotic, is the chemical alteration. Chemical alteration of the drug, or a xenobiotic. And this drug, when it is altered, is a chemical by adding a group or removing a functional group. It is either made active, as we are going to see, or inactivated or converted into an active metabolite. And after being chemically altered, we are going to see that this biotransformation occurs majorly in the liver. Majorly it occurs in the liver, then the minor sites is the intestines, it can occur in the intestines, in the kidney, in the lungs, and sometimes the plasma. But the major site being the liver as the site of bio transformation of the drugs. And after looking at this major site, we're going to see that the major significance of biotransformation is to convert lipid soluble drug, what we call non-polar drug, into water soluble or polar drug by the reaction which we are going to see which these reactions undergo phase one and phase two reactions to make this drug a polar. And the major aim is to enhance elimination. Enhance elimination either via the kidney, which is the major site, that is renal, or via bio. So the major aim of this reaction is to enhance elimination by converting lipid-soluble drugs into polar, or what we call water-soluble drugs. And another thing is when drugs undergo phase one and phase two reaction, they are either activated or we form active metabolite from the active drug. This one is activated when it is a pro-drug. The inactive drugs are activated, then this one we can either inactivate the drug. So these are the major three which reactions that occur when the drug is metabolized. Pro-drugs like pro-drugs like proguanil Proguanil is a pro-drug and it is converted to cycloguanil, which is an active drug. Then we see many drugs also which are already active being converted into active metabolites also during these reactions. And another thing is whereby active drugs, they are inactivated or detoxified so that they are safely eliminated. So this is the significance of biotransformation. And after seeing that the, the definition, the site, and the significance of biotransformation, now we can talk about phases, whereby we're going to begin with the phase one reactions. And under phase one reactions, these ones are called functionalization reactions. Functionalization reactions, whereby either we add a functional group on like on the hydroxyl group or sometimes the amine group those ones which end with the carbon nitrogen or carbon carboxyl groups so after adding or removing a functional group we could make them polar for easy elimination and these reactions are catalyzed by cytochrome which are heme containing compounds by these mixed microsomal enzyme cytochrome P450 isoenzymes. And these cytochrome P450 
P450 are the one that catalyze major oxidation and reduction reaction and different isoenzymes include the major one which is cytochrome 3A F4 stroke 5 we have cytochrome 2D6 we have cytochrome 2C9 we have cytochrome cytochrome 2 2E1 so there are many cytochromes but the major ones is cytochrome 3A4 followed by cytochrome 2D6 which catalyze different oxidation reduction reactions so among the reactions under phase 1 we are going to show you that under save under phase 1 we have major oxidation reaction we have reduction reaction and we have hydrolysis then to the smaller extent we have cyclization reaction and these the first two are, uh, are worked on by cytochrome isoenzymes whereby oxidation is addition of oxygen or you remove hydrogen it's catalyzed by cytochrome p450 isoenzymes which we call mixed microsomal enzymes and this oxidation reaction after adding an oxygen or removing oxygen we either break this functional group to make it polar and these oxidation reactions drugs that undergo oxidation reactions include alcohols in presence of alcohol dehydrogenase and aldehyde dehydrogenase which undergo oxidation reactions then point uh, reaction number two is reduction reaction which is the opposite of oxidation here we are removing oxygen or we are adding hydrogen and these reactions drugs that undergo this reduction reactions include a drug like isoniazid drugs like isoniazid which is an anti tb drug drug like anti antibacterial drug like chloramphenicol they undergo reduction reaction to for to make them polar for easy elimination and then hydrolysis reaction this one is involves addition of water to functional groups and these the enzymes that catalyze this re addition of water to functional groups to make them polar include the peptidase enzymes include these hydrolases hydrolases include these esterase esterases then finally the minor reaction is cyclization whereby we are converting a linear drug into a cyclic structure what we call a ringed structure and an example here is proguanil drug being converted to cycloguanil this proguanil drug which is a linear is activated by converting it into a cyclic ringed structure which undergoes cyclization and after seeing these different reactions there are drugs when taken together they inhibit or induce these cytochrome isoenzymes for example the inducers we have major rifampicin which is an anti tb drug we have phenobarbital which has which is an anticonvulsant phenobarbital we have also carbamazepine these drugs induce the activity so whenever they are taken with a drug like warfarin because they are inducing these enzymes are overworking so they or reduce the plasma concentration of warfarin and we cannot produce its therapeutic use then those ones that inhibit include the ketoconazole the omeprazole the, the erythromycin erythro mycin we have omeprazole we have drugs like ritonavir which is an antiviral drug and we have grape juice even grape juice so these drugs for them they in, they inhibit the action of these oxidation reduction enzymes known as cytochrome p450 so whenever we take them with the warfarin 
they, they inhibit the action and warfarin level concentrations, plasma concentration is high and it can lead to bleeding up to death whenever taken in combination. So these are inhibitors, whereas these are inducers. After finishing this phase one reactions, we can see that only lipid soluble drugs undergo phase one reaction to make them water soluble. Whereas water soluble drugs do not undergo phase one, they go directly under phase two reactions where it is the conjugation reactions. So this one leads us to phase two reactions, which we can call them synthetic reactions, or we can call them conjugation reactions. And these conjugation reactions, they are catalyzed by transferases to render drugs more poor for easy elimination. And this conjugation, we conjugate them with endogenous substances. Endogenous substances majorly derived from carbohydrates and proteins. And one of the reactions is glucuronidation reaction, whereby this glucuronidation, if I have gluconic acid from carbohydrate, glucuronic acid, it is added to the drug to make it poorer in the presence of an enzyme known as UDP, glucuronosyl transferase to make it poorer or non-toxic for easy elimination. So enzyme glucuronosyl transferase catalyzes the addition of glucuronic acid. And the drugs that undergo glucuronidation include drugs like aspirin, drugs that undergo this reaction include aspirin, Paracetamol can undergo these reactions. Then the second one is glutathione conjugation. This is a form of detoxification. Drugs like paracetamol, which produce toxic metabolites like NAPK, are rendered harmless to the body by addition of glutathione, by addition, but it is reduced by glutathione in the presence of an enzyme glutathione S transferase which reduces this toxic metabolite into non-toxic metabolite for easy elimination. That is glutathione conjugation. Another reaction we can talk about is acetylation whereby this acetylation it involves an enzyme any acetyl transferase. We said these enzymes are called transferases in presence of a coenzyme acetyl coenzyme A, which is donating the acetyl group to the drug to make it poorer. And the drugs that undergo this acetylation reaction include sulfonamides. Sulfonamides undergo acetylation in the presences in presence of any acetyl transferase, in the presence of a coenzyme known as acetyl coenzyme A. So this is acetylation. Then another reaction which is rare is methylation reaction, whereby the, the methyl transferase enzyme, methyl transferase enzyme, it adds a methyl group from methionine or cysteine to the drug to make it polar. And the drugs that undergo methylation reactions include drugs like epinephrine, drugs like histamine, they undergo methylation reaction so that they are easily eliminated or they are activated. Another process, which is the last one, is the sulfation, whereby we are going to add a sulfur containing group to the drug in the presence of an enzyme known as sulfur transferase. 
So these are the reactions of phase two, which we have glucuronidation, glutathione conjugation, acetylation, methylation, and sulfation. Thank you so much for watching until the end. We are always privileged to make our channel as your learning center and hope you benefit a lot. Thank you so much.